Welcome back to the Robbie Gordon season mode. We're down to just six races left on the season. The chase for the championship progressively gets less intense this season, unlike a real typical chase for the championship because we now have 115 points above Dale Earnhardt Jr. Last time out was our 29th win on the season. We led the most laps at Kansas. We also finished with a one lap advantage above second. So even though it was a bit of a fuel mileage race that I cut kind of close, the AIs are the ones that really screwed themselves over. Anyway, Dale Jr.'s pretty much established himself as the second best, at least of the chase run. Greg Biffle sets third in points, then Jeff Gordon, Brad Keselowski, Martin Truex Jr., Dennis, McMurray, Jimmy Johnson, the actual 2013 champ, Carl Edwards, Marcus Ambrose down 11th, and Matt Kenseth finally got top 10. His first somewhat decent finish of the chase run, but the amount of points that he gave up through the first three races is going to make it really hard for him to get back up in a contention. So today's race brings us on to Charlotte, and this is back when the fall race was still on the oval. So this race is probably going to be one of the more interesting chase races. The AIs like to wreck a lot coming off turn two and turn four at this place. I myself could hit a reflector wall pretty easily and get myself kicked right to the back. Oh, and not to mention, I'm still going to be running the same setup I brought to the all-star race, which is ungodly loose. It's very fast but also very loose, so I, I might even wreck by myself. We gotta try and make sure the setup is exactly how you want it before qualifying. Get out on the track and see what you think. Like I said, I'm using the same setup that I brought for the all-star race, and I'm also gonna qualify on it, so this is gonna make for a wild qualifying lap. The further up the field you are, the less cars you have to pass during the race, so go earn yourself a good spot in the pack. As you might already know, two of my favorite race tracks are Darlington and Charlotte, so it's always fun when you get to go back to a track like this. It's fast, there's a lot of banking, it's still difficult to lap, and with this setup it's going to be even harder. Love this place. Now let's see how full throttle I can be through three and four. I had to lift just to not wreck, but I could have made full throttle if I was a little bit more precise on that. Here we go. Here we go man. A little Keep slow going. coming to the line. Keep I bottomed out so hard the roof got damaged. <laughs> Lost a little bit of time through three and four. Let's see what it's worth. I don't think the second lap's going to be the same. Pole 2798. That's because I hardly even lifted in one and two. And I'm wrecking this lap, aren't I? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing left. I cannot believe I bottomed this car out so bad in one and two that the roof got damaged. Get me out of this thing. We're on the pole again, fourth pole of the season, and I swept the poles at Charlotte. I like it. Come on, that's what I'm talking about, man. Way to grab that pole. This race just got a whole lot easier. Awesome performance. Now let's make sure you finish the race in the same position. Okay, 27.98 poll time. I was the only one sub 28 seconds. That is flying around a mile and a half racetrack. We knocked Kyle Busch off the pole. Uh, you got, you know, Keselowski, Edwards, Kane up here. Mark Martin in seventh. Travis Pastrana in tenth position. Uh, and his teammate Greg Biffle, the chaser, in ninth. You got Dennis, uh, Matt Kenza, 13th. Dale Jr. all the way down 18th position. David Reagan starting down 29th. Dead last is Michael McDowell, but once again, Joe Nemechek not very far behind. Give it everything you've got out there, and you could end the day in victory lane. Good luck, buddy. Welcome to Charlotte Motor Speedway for tonight's Bank of America 500. I'm Mike Joy with Daryl Waltra. Mike, you like playing at home? Sure. Well, all these teams do, and this is a home game for the race teams. They're all in the area right here. This is their home racetrack. Family, friends, everybody comes over here. Big, big night of racing. A big super speedway, Daryl, a weather-sensitive racetrack, and one where strategy is key. Well, racing into the night, that changes everything. It changes setup. This is a, one of the races in the chase. Everybody puts a lot of special emphasis in winning at Charlotte. It's a short, fast ride to go home. Let's find out who will be first to the finish line. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go all night racing, boys and girls. High side's clear. All right, cutting my way up in front with Kyle Busch playing the lanes. Keselowski taking second. That's reminiscent of the all-star race that we had back in the spring. Me versus Keselowski. Oh man, that thing's bottoming out big. But it's fast. 
I have a look. I've already put like almost half a second. Nice Joe Nemechek, fastest lap. Monumental. I'm going to go out there and decimate his lap, but still. 201. That's in a turn three. All right, let's see what kind of lap I'm putting down here. 27.97, that's better than my pole time. So now is when I figure out how hard I can push it because I'm still not totally sure what I'm going to play my strategy like. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm probably just going to run out to like lap 22 and then pit again lap 44 and just try to split the race into even thirds because I'm not going to be able to do this on one stop. I know that you know Kansas was super cool stretching the fuel that far, but it's not possible here. We got such a good car. I don't think I don't think we have much of concern about the field. Uh, except for the fact the AIs have a habit of starting cautions here. But we did have a long run in the Coke 600. Oh, somebody has just stopped on the front stretch. They are not moving. Now they're back moving. No caution for that. Don't know how the tower didn't see it. It was right in front of your face. Anyway, because lap 22 is still way before I would be concerned about fuel, I don't have to baby this car on any stint. I can just run this thing as fast as the car can go. And that's a driver's dream. I do want to run long on this first stint, and that's simply so I don't get caught out by caution. I'm still going 201 to turn three. I have barely slowed down at all. That's the crazy thing about this setup. It's wildly fast, and it doesn't slow down. And there is Michael McDowell. So he's the one who actually stopped on the racetrack. Now i got to strategize my way around him. That looks like a pretty good way of doing it. Yep, don't, no longer have to deal with him. I mean, we're 11 laps in. I have a six-second advantage. At least I haven't bottomed out so bad I've damaged the roof yet. So you notice that the field is just about to catch Michael McDowell. That's probably going to back Kyle Busch up by a lot, going off how bad the AIs are when it comes to lap traffic in this game. wonder what the AIs pit strategy is going to look like, because I plan on pitting twice. So that's a planned double stop. Does that mean the AIs are going to do like a triple? I wouldn't be surprised. Although I am very proud of the AI cars for not wrecking yet, okay? We're 15 laps into the race. They have not totaled anybody or ruined anything yet. The pace has finally started to slow down a little bit. I'm 16 laps into a run. I finally got a little bit slower. But I'm only nine laps from pitting. Sliding out a little bit. I told you the car's loose. But after, you know, having two races before on this setup, you know, the All-Star Race and the 600 back in the spring, I've finally gotten used to it. At least relatively used to it. 50 laps to go, and my advantage above Kyle Busch is almost 10 seconds. Now it hits 10. It takes me 18 laps to put a 10-second advantage no on second place. Pushing. Didn't want to hit a reflector wall. That's why I backed all the way out of it. All right, so there probably will be cars pitting in the next few laps if I had to take a guess. If I wanted to go for a short pit, I'd be pitting lap 22. I don't feel comfortable with doing that because the AIs, as I've mentioned, have a big habit of wrecking. So we'll see what they plan on doing first. Imagine if because I have to do two stops, they, they all of a sudden just have to do one. Like this is the one race where the AIs can like flip-flop the strategy on me. There's a caution. I didn't even need strategy. They make up essentially stages for me. Matt Kenseth. Hit a reflector wall. This man could not buy a break right now. Coming down pit road. Yeah, everybody should be pitting. Like, there's no reason for anybody to stay out. McDowell's down a lap, so that's why he is. You know, it's funny. I hardly even damage a car at all. 99.9% .9 car performance. When have I ever done a stint, especially at a track like Charlotte, and have not even really damaged a car? You tell me I'm starting to get good at this? I get off pit road as a leader. Me and Kyle Busch again. Just like the start of the race. Travis Pastrana, eighth position. All right, just going to try to replicate the start of the race uh, and drive away from this field again. Pretty much full reset. That caution really couldn't have come at a more timely occasion. Like, that was almost how a stage would work. Right at the time to where it would remove any chance for strategy. Okay, so guess what? Keselowski taking over second again. Yep, bottoming out big because I'm on fresh tires. Okay, half second advantage already. Edwards took over second. 
Okay, let's see. Let's see how much this car gets after it now. I broke it out loose a little bit, more than just a little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of trying too hard because I wanted to beat my fastest lap. That's not what I should be trying to do. I don't think anybody's going to go up there and beat a 27.97. By the way, car pitting. I bet you. I bet that's McDowell. Could have just pitted, stayed a lap down. Instead, you might actually cost yourself a second lap. Oh, and by the way, Michael, here's your second lap down. What did you learn? You did that at Kansas. I'd like to think by now you'd be picking up on it. So we're definitely good to make it on just one more stop. Uh, probably like lap 46 or so for me. You see, into turn one, I'm about 198. Keep digging, buddy. It's not over but yet. I just haul so much through one and two. By the time I get to turn three, I'm going 201. Yep, 201. Yeah, I just can't really get through three and four quite as good. I think it's because the car is bottoming out, and three and four is a little steeper. So the car just bottoms out harder uh, and kind of skips across the track instead of plants in. Three and four, let me demonstrate it again. See, right there it bottoms out twice. And it just kind of tries to throw the car towards the wall. Had a little bit of quiet time to myself out front. And I can tell you that I'm again impressed by the AIs. I figured once Whatever Matt wrecked, doing, you just keep doing it. that would be like the beginning of the end for the AIs being able to keep their race together. And they just start like wrecking every single lap. But uh, pretty impressed that we're pretty much making a second full stint. Getting loose. So I'm catching up to a lap car right now. I'm going to guess that's Joe Nemechek because he's like eight seconds off the next lap car. Let's see. Is this Nemechek? No one's gonna touch you it is. Today. And he has hit something pretty hard with the right side of his car. One inside. All Go right. I'm, I'm clear him, and I did not wreck myself. For me, the pit window opens in a couple of laps. I mean, honestly, it's already open. For me to pit now and make it to the finish but i'd like to wait a little bit just in case the ai's wreck again or a wreck coming to pit road something like that nice and steady second place is way back the car just randomly felt like it just picked up grip again i know this game ain't this realistic but it almost feels like the track cooled off a bunch car in front's heading to the pit. yeah we got a bunch of cars in the pits now so that opens up the pit window to make it to the finish i want to wait a little bit and pit the next couple of laps because I'm still running really, really fast times on these old tires, where it's not that much of a time loss running out here. After, you know, running this stint out like 20 or so laps, that the lap times I'm turning right now are faster than the AIs are capable of doing on fresh tires. That's how hooked up this setup is. About half the field in the pits. This time by, I think Carl just pitted. We having fun out there? Yeah, I'd definitely say this is having fun out there, even though I'm wrecking. Yeah, most of the field on pit road this time. Screw it, I'm coming in. Want to make it relatively conservative entry because I just don't want to screw it up. Okay, Look at that, car performance 100%. I don't even need to worry about repairing. That, I think, is the first time ever I have actually done a stint on the racetrack without damage in the car. Congratulations, Greg Biffle. I think you're going to at least be able to say you led a lap. Kansas, I led every lap. Okay, boys. I'm not going to be able to repeat here. Smart. here we go. Kyle Busch just cleans out our pit crew. There's Keselowski pitting behind us. And I saw Truex overheating on pit road. Kind of interesting there. And here we come. Awesome job, guys. Great teamwork. Okay, go get him. All right, got to make sure I don't wreck here. Because here comes a bunch of fast people. <laughs> Pass me on both sides. Oh, man. Okay, we didn't screw it up. That was, of course, David Reagan. Oh, I almost wrecked myself there. Okay, so Greg Biffle does get the right to say that he has led, I think, two laps. But I'm now the leader again. And I plan on not relinquishing that. Even though I'm right up here in traffic, which is not where I want to be. Car at your door. Down low. At your door. 
Wow, 202. We are on the inside. I needed a bit of a draft, but I finally got above 201. Okay, 20 to go. And now I got to pass on the bottom. Whatever you're doing, you just that was doing easy. It's all clear, bud. I haven't actually really passed anybody today, so this is all foreign. I probably shouldn't help Kenseth. Say hi. Yeah, on the bottom line. Didn't go anywhere anyway. One down low. Okay, so apparently the engine's now overheating, and that's because I put it right up behind the 51. So now I have to <laughs> make sure I don't overheat the engine further. See, no race comes easy, all right? Because now I have to not run in anybody's wake. Even though I've got absolutely the fastest car here, I have to not run behind anybody, which is going to be a challenge. I pretty much just pulled a full send slide job right there. There's no other way to describe it. See, this car doesn't have any overheating issues when it's by itself. Because that's typically where I like to be. Is, you know, so far out front you're not racing anybody. But now we're up in traffic because we're so fast that we're lapping people. Look at my advantage. I have 18 seconds on Carl Edwards. Why do I even need to run this car hard at all? At least I'm back into the green when it comes to the engine temperature. So I really don't have to worry about it anymore. At least not as much. I can't overheat it more, but I also don't really have to worry about it. It's really weird running offset like everywhere you can go. I mean, it makes sense in the corner, but also like doing a crossover and offsetting on the straightaway feels pretty weird. Play right side. It's almost like rain racing because there's like a crossover point where you're still running in the wake. Like right there, I have to change lanes to run out of their wake. It's kind of weird. I thought I was going to be able to put up the inside, but Jeff Burton closed that door. All right, I'd love to just make this move on Jeff right here. Thank you very much. Right. I'm already overheating because I'm running in Paul Menard's wake. Low. And now I'm stuck to run in someone's wake by Burton. Okay, Paul, keep it down there, please. Don't wreck it. Mm, that was on the razor's edge right there. I see a bunch of really fast lap cars up in front of me. Like, I think Harvick's one of them. Yes, he is. Jeff Gordon. Probably a bunch of people I don't want to be running with especially with an engine that's overheating. But Josh Wise is getting up in here and just screwing Keep it, it all the way up. Car up top. Oh, this is not where you want to be with an engine that's, that's running hot. Okay. Offset. Car outside, yeah. Okay, we're doing, doing, doing three. I, I'm just doing. backing out of that. Clear high. See, I'm becoming a smarter driver. You know, we got more cars pitting. Don't really know what's going on with that. Josh Wise is really, really frustrating me, too. Because I'd love to not be in this group. Okay, this is an opportunity to get two of them. The At least. Maybe three. Because I am putting it up in there and not lifting. All right. That got me some clear track, and I think Harvick just put the bumper to Boyer. Oh, man. That was a awkward angle. Okay, a little bit of clear track. A little bit. I can work with it. Just ran over somebody's debris. More cars pitting. I have no idea what's going on with that. And by the way, this is a hilarious mess of traffic here, and I really don't know how I'm going to stay offset from all of them. Closing on the bottom. Yep. We can do yep. This all yep. Day. Yep. Just trying not to wreck now. Put okay. Shouldn't even really be up here. There you go. Low. Okay. It's bound to get stupid. There's McMurray. Clear. Car outside, at your door. Clear up 
Wow, I just cleared Trevor Bain. Didn't actually know that I did. Okay, don't know where we're going. Six to go. Stay low. High side. That wasn't a smart move. Still Didn't wreck it, though. Cutting up. Okay, engine temp is still a little hot, but not in the super danger zone. So I'm still kind of comfortable with it. We're with five laps to go now. And uh, as long as I can not wreck, I think I'll be fine because I got a 20-second advantage. The only problem at this point is that Truex and Dale Jr. is in front of me. Car in front, side of the pit. Whoa! It was Marcos pitting. I think we really do have people doing triple stops. Yeah, that's what's going on right now. Is that Joe Nemechek? Oh, my God. It sure is. You know what, Truex? You're getting pinned behind Nemechek. Car at your door. Up top, at your door. Car up high. Nice and smooth. You're way out in front. Use that clean air. Martin? Inside. Ready to go. Okay, we didn't wreck each other. Good enough. I'll I'll take it. I'll accept it. Thank God that was not a reflector wall. Okay. I'm really sick and tired of this lap traffic. I'm there, Tony. I am there. That's Harvick. I did not realize what we were doing three wide right there. I did not realize that until way too late. Okay. All right. White flag. Come on. Pick your lane, buddy. This is it. Just going to sail it in there. And Harvick did a perfect crossover. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Just got to make it to the finish. One more set of corners. And here we come, another win on the season, sweeping Charlotte. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. You're the man. That's what it's all about right there. We'll see you in Victor Lane, man. That got, I got Jeff Burton. That got way too dicey there at the end with all that lap traffic. That's a good win. Much like Atlanta, you know, the old configuration, even though I've won at every track on the schedule, this would be a track that would suck not to win at. All right, got, got to do that victory lap for this place. And the lap is complete. Got to wreck it. Oh, smoking them tires at like 130. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> You're the man. Once again, we cannot let NASCAR know what was going on with this car because it, it was absolutely flying. That's 30 wins on the season, by the way. Another Jeff Burton fan with us. That'll be really topical since he rammed us. It doesn't get much better than that. Now let's keep it going for the next race. All right, so that's another win, but I was the only competitor to set a lap sub 28 seconds with a 27.97. That was my second lap. Uh, Brad Keselowski brought up second, then Stewart, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson, the highest finishing chase contender. I actually had noticed what was going on with the pit strategy because I was so caught up in the moment with battling all that lap traffic and my engine temperature. But turns out we lapped all the way up to third, so that means everybody else went for a triple stop. Greg Biffle sixth, Carl Edwards seventh, Matt Kenseth another top ten, Dale Jr. in tenth, got Dennis at eleventh, Joe Nemechek finished in fourteenth position. Other than wherever he got a top ten this year, that is probably Nemco's best finish. And that's gonna really screw up last car standings. Travis Pastrana, 17th, Marcus Ambrose, 18th, David Reagan, 23rd, and dead last was Michael McDowell, three laps down. Following the 31st race of the season, and we're now halfway through the chase for the Sprint Cup, the point advantage is now 129 between me and second. Dale Hart Jr. doesn't quite have the advantage he had 
uh, beforehand on the rest of the Chasers, trying to go after that second spot. Uh, Greg Biffles closed in to just four points behind. Brad Keselowski sets fourth, Jeff Gordon fifth, Martin Trex Jr. in sixth, Dennis sets seventh, the real 2013 champion Jimmy Johnson in eighth position, Edwards in ninth, McMurray down to tenth, Marcos in eleventh, and Matt Kenseth still all the way down twelfth, last in the chase grid. Travis has made his way back up into the top 20. David Reagan, by the way, still sets 28th. I don't really see that changing. Look at this, the battle for last car. Joe Nemechek getting a top 20 has now brought Michael McDowell just 10 points away from being the worst driver in the Cup Series field, and Josh Wise just 17. That's that's the battle you want to be paying attention to. So anyway, that does it for today's edition of Robbie Gordon Season Mode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Five races down in the chase, five races left to go. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've got a Patreon set up as well. The final five Robbie Gordon Season Mode editions coming up very soon, so stay tuned for that, as well as whatever else I decide to throw up on this channel.